This presentation describes the Williamson County Repeater website. That website can be browsed at www.n5tt.org colon 8080. The purpose of this site is to give visibility of amateur operators and others that want to understand amateur radio uh, and insight into how our repeater network works. I'll begin the talk with a network description that is what a typical site looks like, a typical repeater site, and then I'll move on to describe the entire, entire network. Uh, then we'll move on to navigating the website. You see the website on the right and we'll cover each of the tabs and talk about the topics that are listed below such as how do you listen from the website and how you can perform signal checks. So with that, let me begin by showing you a typical repeater site. The repeater site has a repeater. I've shown a Kenwood repeater. So you have a repeater, which is a transceiver that receives on one frequency and transmits on another. And that's connected to an uh, antenna via a duplexer and the duplexer separates the transmit and receive signals so that when the repeater is transmitting it doesn't uh, cause the receiver to key as we call it or to activate. The antennas, uh, antenna depending on two meter or a, a 70 centimeter depending on what kind of frequencies you're running on the repeater. The repeater is controlled by a Raspberry Pi. We use Raspberry Pi 3s and 4s uh, running a software package called AllStar. And I won't get into the details of AllStar, but it controls the repeater and it also provides a voice over IP via an embedded application uh, called Asterisk. This whole arrangement is connected to the internet via one of two ways. It can be connected directly to the internet via a router uh, or if you don't have an internet connection available to you, a hardwired one, uh, you can use a cellular modem. And we use cellular modems, uh, cellular routers, in two of our locations which I'll describe shortly. And here we have the repeater network. Uh, we have five repeaters around the Austin area, and we'll talk about each of those. And they're connected via the internet to a hub. And the hub is located at N5TW's QTH uh, here in Georgetown. The hub is also connected via the internet to uh, all the other repeaters that are on the All-Star network, uh, but those of course can be filtered and you can select which repeaters you allow to connect. And then uh, also uh, Echolink users can use their smartphones or a PC application and uh, connect to our hub and therefore to our network uh, via the internet. All of this is connected to the website, which we're going to discuss uh, shortly. So that's a description of an individual site and uh, an overview of our network. So now let's get into the topic of how do we navigate the website. And the website is here on the right, as you can see. To better explain the website, <clears throat> I've expanded it. I went into a zoom mode in the browser and I reduced the navigation uh, dialog over here to the left. The browser page is broken into four distinct parts. Uh, the first part is the tabs at the top and they'll allow us to easily navigate to see different repeater sites and also see some recent QSOs and give us some information about that. The second part of the home page called the listen page 
is the narrative, which describes the repeater listener and gives some information about uh, Echolink and how to connect via Echolink. The third section is the section that tells you who is operating, or rather which repeater is in use at any one time. So I've listed our five repeaters. The Round Rock, which is our primary repeater at the Seton Medical Center, a Taylor repeater, two repeaters that are managed by our 3M partners at the Cedar Park Regional Medical Center, and then the fifth repeater is a Sun City repeater. It's actually a listener, which means it only has a receive capability. The transmit capability for the Sun repeater is really taken from the Round Rock Seton. So uh, our ham operators in Sun City can uh, reach the Sun City receiver much more easily than they can reach the Seton uh, repeater, but they can hear the Seton repeater because it has a higher uh, output. There's no transmit capability at Sun City. And then finally, I also list Echolink and All Star linked repeaters that can join us via a linking protocol. When any of these repeaters are in operation, uh, these dots will turn green, and I'll uh, demonstrate that shortly. The fourth part of the browser page is the listen and record section. And with these two boxes, we can either choose to listen to the Seton repeater, and we can do that simply by pressing this forward arrow. And when we do that, we're going to see the icon has the X removed, indicating it's in listening mode. To turn off the listening, we simply hit the pause button and it goes back to a muted mode. Uh, we can listen to either the Seton repeater or whichever of these other repeaters is active is indicated by the green dot, or we can listen to both. So we can activate both in the listening mode and anyone that operates uh, either of these repeaters then we'll hear them uh, via our PC uh, audio. We can adjust the audio up or down. And what we're going to see when someone is active on a repeater is a green bar indicating the volume that we're receiving from that repeater. So as I think uh, many of you know, the advantage of having the network repeaters is that a transmission on any one of the repeaters will be heard on the other repeaters via the voice over IP network provided by the All-Star and Asterisk package. Uh, the other uh, advantage is that it's uh, very difficult or impossible to get a double uh, from one site to another. That is, if someone is transmitting on the round rock repeater, they'll be heard on the other repeaters, and those other repeaters won't be able to be keyed as long as they're receiving a stream from that uh, Seton or round rock repeater. So you can't get a doubling between sites. Of course, it's possible to get a double from a, a single site where two operators are trying to transmit on the same repeater at the same time. So at this point, I'm going to give a demonstration. I'm going to use the Sun City listener. That is, I'll be transmitting into the Sun City receiver, uh, but the audio is going to come uh, on the transmission, on the RF uh, will come back from the Round Rock repeater, but we will hear the audio uh, over here on the other repeater's site. So I'm going to set that on listen, and then we'll uh, listen as I make a test call. KC1ATT, testing on the Sun City repeater. This is KC1ATT. 
Conducting a test call. Test, test, test. Test, test, test. test, 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 test. KC1ATT clear. So as you saw, we saw the Sun City green light come up indicating that the repeater in use was the Sun City repeater. Uh, it was set to listen, so you may have heard my echo uh, come through uh, from my voice and then, uh, then the uh, repeating uh, from the actually the Seton uh, repeater would have repeated that. And uh, then you saw the green bar indicate the level uh, of the uh, transmission. So now I'm going to do something a little different. The capability of the website is to allow operators to have a signal check without another participant uh, on the uh, check. And that's done by stopping the listening and then we can put the website in the record mode. So I'm going to repeat my test call, but this time we're going to record the test call. The record will only act when there's voice present. In other words, it has an automatic squelch built in. So I can turn on the record and it will only record when there's audio present. So let me try that test call again and I'll uh, stay on the uh, Sun City repeater and we'll see if we can record it. So now I'm going to record and we'll do that by moving the drop down box to the record menu item and then we press the forward key and we're now in the record mode. This is KC1ATT testing a recorded signal check. I'm working with the website n5tt.org in 8080 and I'm preparing a demonstration to show how we can record a signal and then do a signal check without a uh, partner on the other end. This is a single ended signal check. KC1 ATT clear. And so we'll check there. So we see that the record causes a clock to start. We have a one minute record time and the green indicates how much of the one minute we've used. As I say there's an automatic squelch so that if I'm not uh, transmitting then the record uh, signal uh, it does not extend the clock. That is the clock's not consumed unless I'm actually speaking. So let's see if we can now play back our recorded message. To do that, I'm going to hit the stop button. And I'm going to move from record to playback. And so we'll play back our recorded signal check. This is KC1 ATT. I'm going to a recorded signal check. I'm working with the website in 5 to show how we can record a signal and then do a signal check without a uh, partner on the other end. This is a single ended signal check. KC1 ATT clear. Now when the recording is played back, uh, the clock is no longer one minute. It's the full time of the recording. So if you Record for 30 seconds, then that clock will indicate a full 30 seconds. I don't know if we can hear all of the playback uh, on my PC here, but uh, I'll, I'll check that when I uh, edit this recording. So that in, that's a demonstration of how to do a single ended check. The nice thing about the record and playback is that there is no um, static or other interference that comes back if you use something like a parrot mode where you can record into the repeater and the repeater will play it back then of course it's coming back over the air so any distortion you have on your receive side uh, you would hear 
And this way you hear exactly what the repeater is hearing so you know the exact quality of your transmit. And so that's an advantage for this. Now let's take a few minutes and look at some of the other features of the website. We spent the previous segment talking about the listen page, which is the home page and where people will spend most of their time. But the other tabs at the top uh, offer some insights into the network and how it's performing. The five repeaters, Seton Taylor, the two 3M repeaters, and Sun City each have their own tab. I'm just going to address uh, one of those tabs since they're all essentially the same to show you the features that are on those. So let's take the Taylor tab and um, right away uh, we see a green dot for the link status. That link status indicates that there's internet connectivity between the hub location and the Taylor site. So there's a program that runs and sends four packets per second and each packet is time stamped and uh, as long as there aren't an excessive number of packet losses that status will remain green. If internet connectivity is lost also on the listen page you would see the dot besides Taylor turn from gray to red indicating Taylor is no longer connected to the internet. Uh, on occasion you might see all five of these turn red and you'll get a pop-up that says your browser has disconnected the uh, page of, from the web server and most browsers have a timeout uh, if a page is not actively used uh, they will disconnect. So don't be alarmed if you see that and just click OK and then hit the refresh on your browser. So back to the Taylor page. So that's the link status. The other immediate feature we see is a map. So we can click on the map and a new map window will open and that window is going to show us where the Taylor repeater is located and it takes a few seconds for it to load but um, it'll show us a, a, a red uh, button where uh, Taylor is located. It gives us the uh, address here and give it a few more seconds and then a pin to show us where Taylor is located. Now that's useful for uh, users, new users. They can look at each of the sites and figure out which of the sites is closest to their location. Of course, being close doesn't tell the whole story because uh, the height of the repeater and other factors uh, may cause you to choose one over another. Next we see all of the information that's relevant for us to set up our transceiver uh, so that we can uh, use the repeater, uh, the frequency of course, uh, the receive frequency, the tones, and then the offset are all included there. The next set of data are really uh, designed for those of us that uh, watch the repeaters and try to make sure they're uh, operating correctly. Uh, this helps us understand whether we have good internet connection or not. So here we see uh, on the hour we get a report of how many packets that were sent from the near end, and the near end is Taylor. Uh, these are sent to the far end, and the far end is always the hub. See how many were sent and how many received. And you see we're not losing any packets. These packets are particular kind of packet called the UDP user data part which means uh, if they're lost they won't be retransmitted. The other uh, parameter we see is the delay in milliseconds. Now that's important because when you start a, a conversation on the repeater 
uh, then that information, that conversation is repeated on all the other repeaters. If this delay is excessive, then there will be a, an excessive delay for other people hearing you. And if you're in a QSO between two different repeaters, that can be annoying if that delay becomes noticeable. Uh, a general rule of thumb is this delay should not be uh, above 200 milliseconds. If it's above 200 milliseconds, it's going to start to become annoying. This page is helpful to those of us that uh, watch the health of the repeater network uh, because when we operate our transceivers and we're having trouble with a repeater, we need to know whether the problem is associated with the internet connectivity or with the repeater itself. So those are uh, some of the statistics. Most people won't be interested in those, but they will be uh, interested in getting the right setup on their transceiver, and they may be interested in checking the link status or even seeing where the repeater is located. Let's move on to the next tab of interest, which is the QSO log file. The QSO log file is kept by recording all of the conversations on all the repeaters and keeping them listed by date and time. So here we see, for example, let me choose this line here, line number three. And I'll try to come across there. That says that 10, 20, 10 12 on February 8th, there was a 28-second uh, QSO that lasted between the Seton, somebody on the Seton repeater and someone on the Taylor. Now, there could be one or more persons on the Seton repeater and one or more persons on the Taylor repeater, but uh, this tells us that uh, a QSO did take place, a rather short one. Um, of course, there's a little longer one here uh, between uh, Seton and the 3M uh, UHF uh, repeater. So this is someone using the UHF repeater and conversing with somebody on Seton. As you can see, Seton is our most popular repeater, uh, but uh, all the others get some use uh, as well, and that's helpful. And this is a page that may be of particular interest to people running nets, like our Monday uh, New Ham users net, because uh, net control can see which of the repeaters are being used. And in fact, if they're looking at the listen page, they'll see as each uh, ham reports in, they'll see which repeater that ham is using. So that may be of benefit to uh, the net operators. And then we have the repeater usage summary. So all this page does is summarize all that information you saw in the QSO log files on a daily basis. And we can see here our New Ham's net on the 5th of February had uh, pretty good attendance that uh, we saw uh, the usage go up on all the repeaters uh, for that particular date. And that's because that's a Monday and the New Ham's net. Now the rest of this is in zeros because I restarted the web server and when uh, I restarted it, uh, it zeroes out some of the dates, but uh, that will be caught up. I just made a change to the website. It used to combine um, all of these repeaters and just have Seton and others, and that's the reason there's zeros here. That concludes my talk on the Williamson County Amateur Radio Club listener website. Um, you can browse that website at www.n5tt.org colon 8080. If you have questions or comments about this presentation, please drop me a line at gkcamber, that's gkcambr at yahoo.com. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank Tom Whiteside, N5TW, and Tom Nevue, W2MN, for all the work they do to get these repeaters uh, up and operating and keep them online. 
it's a tremendous task, and uh, I just uh, enjoy working with both those gentlemen and uh, enjoy our club. Thank you.